Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Kevin Haesong Sheridan. Recently, uh, I was hit with an old trigger. As I grew up poor <clears throat> in an unsafe home, I somewhere along the way linked safety and poverty in my mind as a child. Over the last couple of months, the company that I've been working for has been planning layoffs. And not knowing if I was going to be hit by it, this led me to extreme fear that the economic hardship would be brought to me and my family. But it also pulled that old trigger on my old fears and pulled them really hard. But how could this be? How could this happen? I'm a practicing Buddhist after all, and therefore I should be above these moments, right? The practical truth is that even when we practice and continue to learn the Dharma, we can still have our scales tipped to one side or the other, move away from our primary point. This particular old trigger <clears throat> has, been, has happened to me many times in the past, but what I did notice this time around was that one, I became aware of it happening to me much faster. And two, I was eventually able to calm my fears and allow myself to become understanding of the situation and the grip it had on me. I noticed the more that I sat in Zen on this predicament, the less it had a hold on me. This didn't make the possibility go away. But I realized that in my 60 years, my situation has been in change, always. And this was key to being able to quell the overwhelming fears that were born in my trauma as a young boy. We all pursue happiness and wish to have it at all times. Messages for pleasure, happiness, and being well off are everywhere, all around us, all the time. Heck, it's the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are even in the U.S. Constitution. Truth be told, we all want to be free from our fears and the uncertainty that life can introduce. But situations for the whole world, all the time, in every moment, are changing. When a bird is alive, it eats ants. When the bird dies and falls to the ground, the ants eat the bird. Time and circumstances can change at any time. The Buddha once said that all he really taught about was what is suffering and how to end suffering. In other words, how to understand suffering to a point where you can put an end to it for you. That's not an easy thing, but it's the essence of his teaching. It's all you really need to be taught, he said. From that point on, you're truly independent. There is, after all, a reason that it was the first of his noble truths. The practice of the Buddha's teachings can be called a true pursuit of happiness. The essence of the word true used here, meaning a happiness that doesn't waver, a happiness that cannot be removed. So many of the Buddha's insights focus on suffering because most of the happiness but the things that we interpret as happiness in our lives really end up causing suffering for us as they change. Many times, <clears throat> the happiness we chase and initially feel so lucky to obtain turn out to be something entirely different from what we originally thought it would be. That person you wanted a relationship with so badly, the job you couldn't wait to get, the house, the car, that special possession. And what then when happiness turns into suffering, you become depressed and turn even to more attachments to alleviate the suffering, which ironically contribute even more so to it. Many times we turn to the wrong people, places and things because we're confused about what happiness and suffering really are. Then things like alcohol, drugs, cheating with other men and women, stealing, even killing, and come into play. Often when we run up against suffering, 
and the problems in our lives, we have two initial reactions. One, why is this happening? And two, can someone or something help me escape this pain? We then call on bodhisattvas, Buddha, and God, as if we're calling for a relief pitcher in the ninth inning to come in and save us, not understanding that the saving we need is from ourselves. Don't misunderstand me. It's very good to have faith and spirituality, but the practice should not be one of, in case of emergency, break glass, but rather accomplish daily whether things are what you deem good or bad. Voodoo is quoted as saying, is it truly a noble thing to search for a material kind of happiness? Is it a wise, skillful thing to search for that kind of happiness as an end in and of itself? If you know it's going to let you down at some point, why then do we put so much effort to pursue it? I believe these are the type of questions that led them to go off in the wilderness and find if there was a true happiness. And that could be gained through human effort and apart from material attachment. Once enlightened, the Buddha taught that the goal is to understand that suffering is really about understanding what producing the suffering in our minds. He revealed that there are two types of suffering, the stress and the changefulness of life, which cannot be controlled. It happens around us all the time, but also the unnecessary stress and suffering that we cause ourselves over those changes or changes that have not even truly impacted our lives. We call this monkey mind and Zen Buddhism, making mind that cannot be still. In the layoff situation that I earlier explained happened to me, was I really starving? Was I really in any immediate danger? Were my family really in any peril? The answer was, of course, no. But in my mind, I truly believed I was. We are, after all, our thoughts. And that is the real goal of Zen, because once that second suffering is removed from our lives, then changes come and changes go. But our minds are not impacted. And hence, our lives are not impacted at all. Anjan Swat, a Thai Buddhist monk, would say to his students, that mountain over there on the eastern horizon, is it heavy? His answer would be, if you try to pick it up, yes. If you don't try to pick it up, it's not heavy for you. It may be heavy in and of itself, but if you don't pick it up, it doesn't intrude on you. Then it's not an issue for you. The same applies with some of the suffering that impacts us daily. As we sit here and we think about what demands are being placed on us in our lives, which ones are those you are picking up and suffering from? Which ones are causing you the most fear? Because in this movement, moment, excuse me, with Unsan, all that's really being asked is that you sit relatively still for an hour, breathe, watch your breath, and allow your mind to stop the sensation of thinking. Each time you sit down to meditate, ask yourself, what are you here for? You want real happiness, but have you truly found it? If not, then what can you do to change what you're doing? Develop the ability to ask these type of questions, and the answers will come as you sit sazen. In the parting words we read weekly at this meeting, we recite, life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature. Do not squander your time by night or day. It's a wake up call to us. As Master Song San used to say, just do it. Practice Zen daily, pay attention to your mind. Respond instead of reacting when possible. Enlightenment is but a moment. String the moments together. Whether the whole world is a flower or on fire is up to you and your thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>